so my name's James Taylor. I'm Assistant Director for Narrative and Content. And essentially, I'm in, I oversee all of the historical content um, at Imperial War Museums. Imperial War Museum is a national institution. Um, it was set up in 1917, so during the First World War. And originally, it was set up specifically as a First World War Museum. Um, since then, of course, Britain has been uh, involved in other conflicts, and those are now part of our remit, so up to the present day. And we have five different branches now as well. So Imperial War Museum London, where we are now. Um, the Churchill War Rooms, so Churchill's underground headquarters in London. HMS Belfast, the Second World War warship, which is on the River Thames. Imperial War Museum North um, in Manchester, and also uh, IWM Duxford, which is a former RAF airfield. Yes, I mean, we're a museum. So, I mean, the key thing is that we have the actual historical evidence um, from which we can tell stories around. I think one of the important things to say is that, of course, you know, museums are not monoliths. We have to change over time with our audiences. So um, if, for example, I think of the, the very first visitors to the Imperial War Museum, they were all, in some sense, veterans of the First World War. So they might have been on the home front, they might have fought in France and Flanders, they might have fought at Gallipoli. I mean, even children then were, to some degree, veterans. Um, now, of course, 100 years after the First World War, there is no living memory of that conflict. And so it's up to us, as the curatorial teams, to give meaning to it, where we did, that wouldn't have been the case, say, 100 years ago. Yeah, I mean, I think this is hugely important. I mean, we do have a shared history. Um, you know, particularly if I take the two, what we think of as the two great wars of national self-defense, the First World War, and the Second World War, these show what can happen when um, Europe is, is split apart. And so I think there are really, it's really important that those are studied. Um, so yes, the, the European story, we don't just tell a very, you know, the, we ha obviously have a British and Commonwealth focus, but also those stories cannot exist on their own without telling a wider European story. It's, it's been a subject of discussion for as long as I can remember here. Um, I think the challenge of that name is that um, most museums act as advocates for their subject. So a science museum is a champion for science. An art gallery um, you know, shows the wonders of art. I think a lot of people think that that must mean we like war because we're an imperial war museum. So they're two not very fashionable words. But um, that is not what we do at all. What our job is, is to, um, is to gather the memories and possessions of people who fought in those wars and then to explain what their meaning is. That is what our job is. Um, I mean, I suppose the link between past and present has always been that this museum has focused on individual stories of people caught up in war. So I think that's the key thing. We were set up to make sure we never forget what it is to live in a time of conflict. And one of the things that has always interested our visitors is people's stories. So that is our link from past to present. And I think what we are now having to do, um, because those voices are disappearing, certainly they've gone from the First World War, they're going from the Second World War, is to make sure that we do give voice to those people still. And that's what our responsibility is as curators. I think it's hugely important. I mean, one of the, the important aspects of our job is to discuss, to debate, and I think that we can't just confine that to a, a British um, forum. It has to go beyond that. And indeed, this is something that we already do. We discuss, we talk with our colleagues, not just in Europe, but also globally. And I think that's crucial to get those different perspectives. Yeah, I mean, we do. I mean, that, that exhibition was set up in 2000, but even now, we're having to plan new Holocaust galleries because historical knowledge has moved on since 2000 quite a, a great deal. So we are always having to look about at how we reach our audiences and how our content has real integrity. So this is why we are constantly in a state of movement. 
I mean, I think engaging in discussion is, is what's absolutely critical. Um, it's difficult to think of any concrete things that were, but that's for further discussion, I think. I mean, we certainly, we, we certainly endeavor to do that. That's not always possible within an exhibition. An exhibition only allows you, you know, a very limited amount of space. We, we always start off with, with, you know, we're confined in what we can do. But if I, if certainly we do try to do that. I can give you an example. Um, when we were looking at um, Britain's story in the First World War, um, the traditional British story of the Battle of the Somme in 1916, for example, talks only about the British losses, which were indeed terrible during the battle. But what we've endeavoured to do in our First World War galleries, which opened only three years ago, is to show that they had a terrible effect on the German army as well, and indeed made Germany actually change its strategic course during the war. <laughs>